Coach of the Cougars joins us with a look to Logan as BYU football with Kalani Sitake starts now. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right. Hello once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside Studio C at the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo, Utah, for another edition of the Satake Show, your weekly peek inside the Cougar football program. We hope you enjoy the next hour with us. We've enjoyed putting this hour together for you. All right, coming up on tonight's show, we'll have questions for the coach a little later on. You can submit questions for Kalani on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Just use the hashtag Satake Show. And again, we'll get to questions a little later on for Kalani. Coming up on this evening's broadcast, we'll recap the Cougars upset of number 14, Boise State. We'll visit with defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki as he takes us inside the film room. Plus, we'll preview BYU's 89th overall meeting with Utah State, while Deep Blue explores Diane Gomolaku's journey from war-torn Liberia to Provo. We'll take your questions, as mentioned, for Coach Sitake in our Q&A segment and chat with senior tight end Moroni Laulupututau here in studio. And to get the show going, we say hello once again to the head coach of your BYU Cougars. He is Kalani Sitake. <laughs> All right, Greg. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, guys? Hey. It was ten days ago, but it still feels pretty good to talk about that last win you had against Boise State. Yeah, I almost forgot about it. So, <laughs> just, yeah, we've already moved on and got our prep ready for the next for the next game and get focused on Utah State. But uh, yeah, still feels good to have a, a bye week, but then do it with a win, you know. And and uh, the guys worked really hard. Had another great practice today, so be ready for it. It'll be cold, but it'll be a lot of fun. Looking back on what you did last, uh, what an effort uh, to get right on a big night for the team, I thought. Yeah, I thought, I thought the coaches worked really hard. The assistants and, and uh, players executed a great game plan. And, and um, the players, you know, they're, they're on a mission to, sh to show that they're way better than what we've shown the mm. previous weeks. And, and um, yeah, I, I think it was just fun to see them play and, and to get the win against a quality opponent. And, a lot of uh, a lot of respect for Boise State, but it was good to, to get that win. And there are some things that we we still could have done better in that game and could have could improve on. And that's what we focused on this week and last week. And uh, it was just nice to do it with a win, though. Before it totally fades into memory, we're going to look back on that 28-25 uh, <laughs> win over Boise State. It improved BYU to three and four on the season. And uh, BYU went down the seven nothing early in this one. Boise State scored on its first possession, but then BYU answered and uh, would tie the game. At seven, Lopini Katoa squaring the game. Boise State would uh, make a 38-yard field goal, take us to halftime, BYU down at 10 to seven. Great third quarter for BYU. Tremendous third quarter, really. Uh, 21 points on only, I think, 11 plays. This was one of them. Sione Fina with his first touchdown as a coup. Yeah, Sione is a great player, and, and he's, you know, he's been uh, waiting for his opportunity. I, I think it's uh, really nice that he was able to get some runs and show his athleticism and his speed, so it's good to see him out in the in open field. and. He's very dangerous when he has that much space. BYU took a 14-10 lead, a lead the Cougs would not relinquish. The lead stayed at four as Sachs missed a field goal. And again, BYU went back to work in this very productive third quarter. First of two touchdown passes coming up to Matt Bushman. And this is on a clever little fourth down play that finds a Matt open down the seam. Yeah, I thought it was a well-executed play set up with a quarterback sneak earlier in the game and came back with that. I think Boise was expecting the quarterback sneak for the first down. and. Our guys, uh, I mean, that's a great, great, great play call, and uh, Coach Grimes, A-Rod, and the group did a great job, you know, focusing on executing there. Second Kafusi brother with an INT on the night earlier. It was Isaiah, and here's brother Jackson. So the Kafusis account for two INTs, and, and most importantly, Kalani, this pick set up a short field and a quick score. Yeah, I'm just really excited that, um, you know, Jackson and Isaiah were able to read the quarterback size and, and do their job. I mean, uh, you know, it wouldn't have been able to work without the other guys putting pressure on the quarterback as well. A heck of a play, huh? Yeah, great play call and, and great setup. And Bushman seems to be the guy to go to in that position. So that's a, you know, a lot of points in the third quarter. Let's do that every quarter. You have 21 points on 11 plays. You average about 17 yards per play. You'll take that uh, every week. And there we see a Baylor Romney delivering a strike. Maybe a little underthrown, but good ball skills from Matt Bushman to haul it in and bring it in for six. Uh, first multiple touchdown night in uh, Matt Bushman's career. In the fourth quarter, BYU would not score with the lead of 28-10 would hold up. 
Uh, Boise answering with a couple of touchdowns. Nice catch from Octavius Evans to make the score 28-18. Uh, to 18. Two point conversion was good. And then uh, later in the quarter, uh, Chase Cord was playing as a backup as BYU was down to its third quarterback. Boise was down to its second quarterback, Achillean Butler, in the back of the end zone. BYU would go up 28-25. And then finally, to end the game, uh, scrum formation comes back and gets the job done, but not before a little bit of a controversy on some measure and a remeasure and a lot of discussion about what to do next. Yeah, I mean, that's why they have the replay and the challenges and things like that. So uh, I think uh, we knew going into it that we were going to go for it. Uh, but we, you know, we were ready to have our offense go and our scrum and our punt team just in case. And it was just Austin Confensis yeah. taking a little push. He's got uh, people in the backfield to help him out. And that meant uh, you could celebrate a little bit. Yeah, I was just really happy for Confensis. <laughs> I mean, Austin, Austin really wanted it, you know, and, and, and the guys trust him. And I mean, I, I thought it was really important that the players get what they want. They wanted to go for it and win the game at that point. And I'm good with winning the game on one play. And so BYU, for a third time this year, wins a game by exactly three points. 28-25 is your final score here. So it's a win against Boise for the first time in a little while, and it's a second home win over a ranked team this year. And of all the great uh, long football history of BYU football, the Cougars had never before this year, Kalani, uh, beaten a uh, ranked team at home two times in the same season. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's the huge credit to the players. And I'll be honest that this how excited we were to see all the fans that were there that night and, and stuck it out through some really bad weather. Yeah, it was wild know? weather. <laughs> and yeah, it was it was it was crazy because it rained and got everyone wet and then it froze us <laughs> later on with some snow. And so uh, just the, the Cougar faithful were out there and, and uh, warmed us up and, and uh, the players are just really excited that the, that the fans stuck around in it. No, I, I thought the same thing too. Um, it, it seemed like like the crowd was really well spread around the entire stadium and, and folks hung out even through the, the, the bad weather. And I thought it was just an enjoyable night all around. And they made a lot of noise and brought yeah. a lot of energy. So, you know, I, I think that's the best way when you're cold is just to cheer and scream as loud as you can and jump <laughs> up and down. And, and they did that, you know, and, and um, it, it gave us a lot of energy. So it was, it was really, really fun. And thank you to all the fans that were there. Well, it was the first career start at quarterback, of course, for a Baylor Romney. He played well. A couple of touchdown tosses, uh, no picks, a pass efficiency rating of better than 150, and that's usually a pretty uh, sure sign of victory. How do you think uh, Baylor did for his uh, first go as the man? Great job, and I thought he you know, had a lot of poise in the pocket. There's, uh, there's some times that the, the, the pass pro broke down, but he was able to just you know, sidestep and make a play, and I thought that um, other than the first play of the game, <laughs> um, you know, everything else was pretty flawless with the, how we managed the offense and, and ran, ran, the, ran the plays, and I, I was really pleased with him. He's, the guy's been waiting for his opportunity, and, and uh, you know, I'm just glad that he was able to seize his chance and make him plays and win us a game. Baylor was playing because Jaron Hall was unavailable. Uh, has Jaron been cleared, and is he good to go this week? Yeah, Jaron's been practicing. Um, Baylor and Jaron been competing uh, this entire week, and so, uh, you know, Jaron was able to practice a little bit last week as well, so... Uh, you know, we're, we're going to go with um, the guy that gives us the best chance to win, and, and uh, those guys will keep competing and, and working through some things. And then uh, I trust, uh, you know, Grimes and A-Rod and the coaching staff to get the right guy on the field. So you'll have both guys available to you. As to who a starter is going to be, we're probably not going to know until uh, game time, maybe? Yeah, not today, but uh, I'll let you guys know as soon as I find out. Okay. <laughs> so we're kind of in competition mode, I guess. Both guys are going to go out there and, 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 and that's, see what they can do during the That's week. with every position group. You know, we, we're, we got some linemen back this week as well, and, I think you have to allow them to compete and, and um, see who, who can get the spot back. And it's it's a small window of opportunity for them to compete. And, and maybe it's an opportunity for us to look at more guys than just one playing the entire game. And not just quarterback specifically, mm -hmm. but other, other positions too. So it's just nice that we're getting guys back on the field. And, and um, you know, it's good that Jaron's back. But, um, you know, looking at Zach's progress, he's, he's got the cast off and everything. So if you ask him, he thinks he can go too. But... I don't know if he'll be ready to go this week, but so, uh, mentally he'll be prepared. But before long, you're going to be sitting here with three quarterbacks who've made starts this season, and those are all valuable reps for all of them. And, uh, again, I, I, it's an abundance of good, which is not a bad situation. Yeah, I remember being in a position where we just need quarterbacks. I just remember that earlier, in, you know, a few years ago. And, and just uh, I think the more the merrier for us, especially at BYU. So we should never be down any quarterbacks. And if we have to go through all six or seven guys, then they should be able to win us games. Uh, among the changes we saw in the Boise game, uh, change in location uh, for O.C. Jeff Grimes. He came down on the field from his spot in the booth. I know he liked the new perspective. Uh, why do you think it worked so well for him and the team? I think he's the kind of guy that his presence has felt. He's a big guy, and he's used to being um, in front of the O-line. And, you know, I think we had some new guys playing at O-line. We had a true freshman playing at tackle. But 
We also had a freshman at guard, and there's some new new things that we're trying to do offensively. And I think he has a really great relationship with Aaron Roderick up in the in the box and Steve Clark in the box. So they're able to communicate really well. And I think um, you know Grimes brought it up to me that he wanted to be down there and make a difference on the field. And I thought it brought some intensity. And he's really good, in, you know, in person. You've met him before, so. I think uh, it's easy for him to get guys to get going if things are kind of going through a little bit of a lull. And he told me on coordinator's corner, he kind of felt like he might be there for a little while. Like he liked, he liked the vibe down there. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure the weather made him think twice, but uh, <laughs> he's a tough guy, so he can, he'll be okay. Just put on a, a coat and be ready to roll. Good stuff. All right, uh, the win over Boise State, as I said, uh, gives the Cougars two home wins over a top 25 team for the first time in program history. So it's a win good enough. We want to get even more out of it as we highlight some of the uh, top plays from the last game. And to do that, let's watch our own uh, Jerem Jordan of Sports Nation fame and defensive coordinator Elisa Tuiaki as we now go inside the film room. Okay, Elisa, certainly a great win for this team, and the defense showed up in uh, spades. Uh, How did you feel about the performance against Boise State? Uh, you know, I thought that uh, the, the aggression um, was great. It was a good message for the boys that we were going to stay aggressive with. The, the type of blitzes that we had and, and the amount of times that we blitzed. Um, and that, that one really trickled straight down from the top. Galani wanted to see it, and we all were on board with it. And, and I think the message was good for the kids. OK, let's break down some film, and let's focus on the defensive line, uh, first with space integrity. For me, and what I've always thought was important was the integrity of space. And so if we were to take all these offensive players and erase them, just basically erase all the offensive linemen and just say, can the running back run in between you two? Can he run in between you two? This guy has the hardest job. His, his job, he can he can always get you know double teamed from one side or the other, and he's got to be ready to play with uh, with uh, you know great tenacity inside as far as just stopping. And so holding two, right? So if you look at the picture right here as we stop it, right? Uh, we're we're praising all three of them right now because they're both taking all three of them are taking up two. And so when any time you can take up two and hold space, the backers are free. Keenan here is just basically, you know, got no, nothing, nothing, nothing to slow him down as far as what he reads and what he tackles. You know, when you're a backer, you, you love having defense alignment that relish the role of basically taking up two and holding space. But uh, this certainly was kind of a, a exactly what we wanted. Okay, next play, uh, one of the two sacks on the night. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, staying with the theme of, of spacing, when, when, when a quarterback is back there throwing, what we talk about is basically creating a trap for him. What we're looking for as defensive linemen is, is an indicator, an indicator that pass rush needs to stop and I need to get my hands up. And this right here, when I'm watching it, tells me Lorenzo's eyes are correct. He's got his hands on the offensive lineman, but he's got his eyes on the quarterback. And so as soon as we see the indicator, which is the quarterback's, the quarterback separating, you know, separating, getting ready to throw, then that tells us it's time to get our hands up. And so he does a pretty good job with that, but he gets back down and, and sees the quarterback step up and go. All right, and let's finish with uh, another defensive line play. Uh, twist, a different look. Yeah. And yeah. are these calls coming from the sideline uh, as to what you they, want them they, to do? They are, they are. They're, they're coming from the sideline. And so really, this was, this was a, a, a check for us. We've got what we call an ox on this side right here, which is ox is the outside guy, goes first. The inside guy's gonna loop second and go there. You see how uh, Kyrus is is uh, looking to loop outside, and Devin is looking to go inside. And then on this side right here, we've got what we call an Indian, which is the inside guy goes first. And so the inside guy is gonna penetrate, and then the outside guy is gonna come up and under. And uh, you can see Peyton right here just hold the edge. You see number 70, the tackle thinks he's got to block Peyton, and then Peyton loops back inside. And so that's another person that's gonna show up if this thing ends up cutting downhill. Bracken shows up, ends up getting a three-yard TFL. Okay, Utah State, another tough challenge uh, coming up. Uh, what's the key or two to beating the Aggies in Logan? I think more important than anything, be sound. We can't we can't be running around looking for the call. And um, all the time you face teams like this that are really fast-paced and, and get on the ball is we all we all talk about just getting your cleats in the ground. Get your cleats in the ground and play sound football. We got to be ready to roll. Okay, great breakdown. I appreciate the time and good luck in Logan. Thank you. Thanks, E. All right, Elisa, Jerem, thank you for your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play. -play. Watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, it's a look ahead to Logan and BYU's upcoming game against Utah State. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake.
excited for the reboot. The teaser looks really good. Mm. So Sammy, are these yours? Mom, what are you doing here? Can a mom just drop in on her special snowflake? No, really, what are you doing here? I'm moving in with your sister to make sure you two eat healthy. We know how to feed ourselves. Mm, just like you know how to decorate. <laughs> Don't worry, I took care of that too. The girls are gonna love it. BYU Meal Plans, home cooking without mom. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Her mother says, you can't marry him. You haven't known him long enough. Now look at it, almost seven years. <laughs> we have 33 grandchildren. The Lord's blessed us in many ways. I can't believe that it's been almost 70 years ago that I married him. And he makes every day of my life a happy one. We're the Gandys. And our wife is our family tree. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Look at the old wagon wheel, the prize for the winner of the BYU-Utah State game since 1948. The Aggies have won it the last two seasons. They last rolled the wheel three times in a row back in the early 1970s. Don't want that to happen. Looking ahead to the weekend, our pregame coverage of BYU and Utah State coverage begins on BYU Radio with uh, Cougar pregame live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, with BYU TV's countdown to kick off one hour later. The game's on ESPN2 and BYU Radio. Then post-game coverage on both BYU TV <laughs> and BYU Radio. Welcome back, and we're giving out a, a special birthday shout-out uh, to a former Cougar football player from the 1950s, late 50s, Dick McGoffin, who this week is celebrating his 80th birthday with us. He's in attendance with us here in Studio C, joined by his family. <laughs> I hope it's okay to say uh, that Dick is uh, currently in a battle with, with cancer, and uh, we wish you and your family all your best uh, to that end, and hang in there, and great to see you and have you with us. Thank you. All right, that's Dick McGoffin. All right, BYU has won 15 of its last 20 gridiron meetings with Utah State, but recent games have seen a more closely contested rivalry, a competitiveness reflected in these comments from current Cougars. Sometimes I tell people that uh, I, I want to beat Utah State more than Utah, and that, that may be some of a... Uh, that may be a little too far, but I, I do have very strong feelings for that team, and I do want to beat them. Whoever's going to win this game is going to be the team that's more physical on, on Saturday night. Um, they're, they have crazy fans. They're, they're all energetic. They like to talk, so it's, it's fun. We're, we're excited to, to go and, and to play uh, Utah State. Gary Anderson always does a great job of, of getting his boys to buy in and be ready and play tough, and I think we're going to see that, and it will be It'll be another another fun game this year. Every game means a lot to us. It doesn't matter who's playing USC, Utah State, Utah don't matter. It means a lot to us, and we're coming into the game ready to win. So it's going to be a tough challenge, but I'm excited. I think it's it's about time we get that wagon wheel back. All right, BYU comes into Saturday's game three and four on the season. Aggies four and three, but uh, coming off a 31-7 dusting at the hands of the Air Force Academy on the weekend. It was US Utah State's first loss this season to a non-P5 uh, program. Uh, they'd come in 4-2, and two, and then uh, Coach uh, Falcons got after him pretty good, but Aggies also have some good wins on the resume this year. They do, and, and uh, you know, Gary Anderson, you, meant, you saw Fessy mention it, that he'll have them ready, and so, uh, you know, they, they play a lot different at home as well, so uh, I think this is a good opportunity for us to go up there in Logan and, and have a great game and, 
and make it work. But I mean, they they pose some 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 uh, threats on offense with the speed that they they go. They did the same thing that they did last year, and uh, I think last week against Air Force was a little bit different, where the elements kind of kind of hampered their their ability to throw the ball. It's really windy and, and really cold, and I think. Uh, they were they were stuck, you know, trying to trying to. They only had like 38 plays on offense, and Air Force milked the clock and, yeah. and took care of the ball, and, and the time possession was was uh, so much more on one side than the other. So uh, we're, we're gonna do whatever it takes to win the game, but we have to do our identity. And I think James Empey said it the most: it's going to be a physical game, and the team that's the most aggressive and physical is going to win. What you just said a minute ago uh, leads to the stat that we saw in the graphic, and that is uh, Utah State is dead last nationally in possession time right now having a tough time staying on the field offensively. Uh, quarterback Jordan Love had a really good game against you guys last year at Lavelle Edwards Stadium, but this season down a bit. Uh, more INTs than TDs, pass efficiency numbers down a full 40 points over last year. Uh, what are you seeing out of the play from Jordan Love this year? Well, I think he's still he's still a capable player and, and very dangerous. You know, I, I think the uh, you can't just uh, look at the fact that, that there's, there's, you know, they had some struggles this, this year than last year, but He's an NFL type quarterback and, and got a lot of size and speed and a strong arm and he has a lot of poise so uh, you know it's going to create some issues for us we have to take care of our, our coverage and, and on our with a defensive backfield but um, I think for us we have to p try to find a way to be aggressive defensively and that that means a lot of different things it's, it's not always just blitzing but it could too so we'll see what happens on in the game but I think for our mindset is to be aggressive and be relentless and I think the D-line's got to own the front and then uh, whatever we do with the rest of the defense as far as coverage and, and um, you know, mixing up our coverages and things like that, it's all going to be, we'll find out on Saturday. But I think the guys are ready for this moment. We had an extra week to prepare for it. So I think there's a lot of things that we can bring to the table. It seems like looking back on, on the last game, you took that, that three-game Boise State win streak and you kind of acknowledged it and said, yeah, we, we got to get one back here. And you did, and it was important. So Utah State's won back-to-back -back games. Do you kind of lean into it the same way and say, yeah, these rivalry games, you, you can't let them go too one-sided. You gotta, you know, it, it's an important thing. Yeah, I think it's just, I, I mentioned before, after the Boise game, it's just we play really good when we have something to prove. And so uh, this is something for us to prove and get the, the, the wagon wheel back. And, and you, know, you know, I think Gary's the guy that kind of started uh, the switch for when Utah State became uh, a little bit more competitive in the rivalry game. So uh, this is a good opportunity for us to go up there and play. And now that he's back there as a head coach, and Second stint, and I'm really close with him. A good friend of mine, a former teammate, and Justin Enna that's on their on their you know as a defensive coordinator. There's a lot of guys that I know there. I mean, Justin and I were really close when we were here in college, and so uh, the, we're familiar with each other, and that's going to make it even more fun. But when it comes down to it, it's the players executing and making the plays. And uh, you know, we looked at some of the things that we did last year, and and kind of change change things some things up. But I think that even last year, if you look at the fundamentals and and the technique of the game. We could have really improved and then had a better outing if we'd have done that. Okay, take us through your career path as it's intersected with Gary Anderson there. Yeah, so when I I, uh, I was a GA here at BYU, Gary Anderson was the head coach at Southern Utah and gave me an opportunity to be um, a, a, an assistant. Aaron Roderick was the offensive coordinator down at Southern Utah, so I coached running backs and tight ends, and then I coached the O-line after that. And when Gary went to uh, Utah as a defensive coordinator, um, he, you know, he and, and Kyle Whittingham hired me to come and coach the linebackers. and. When Gary left to go to Utah State as a head coach, I took over as a defensive coordinator at Utah. So, um, you know, and then when he went to Oregon State, I went with him there. So that we've been we've been together, and, and uh, you know, I, I've mentioned a lot of mentors that I have in, in, in coaching is Kyle Whittingham and Gary Anderson and, and Lavelle before he passed. But um, I think that there's a lot of guys, people that are out there that that are really good in, in football and coaching and just good men, and, and uh, I like our friendship. But you know, we're friends right now. But when we play on Saturday night. We'll be friends after the game, but I know he wants to win. I want to win even more than he does, so we'll see what happens. How much does your familiarity with, with Gary show up in everything you see on video when you watch their stuff? Yeah, I just know that he'll have the guys ready. I mean, you can't bank on the last week's performance as something that's going to break their team. He'll have those guys ready to play, and he's got a tough group of guys in, in Logan, you know, and, and their coaches, and they'll they'll have those guys ready to play. And, and I've said this before that we're going to get their best shot. You know, we just need to make sure that they get ours when we show up in Logan, and and that's what we've been working on with this with this bye week and this week week's practice. And 
what I saw from today, I'm, I'm feeling really good about it. As we saw, once upon a time, you were an offensive coach. You played offense at BYU. Did, yeah. You're known as a defensive guy now, but you coach some offense too. Yeah, and I, I've, I've coached every position in, in football except for the quarterback position, you know. So uh, is that a dream of yours? <laughs> not really, you know. <laughs> I, I like I like the defensive side now, and I think that uh, a lot of the things that I learned from defense was from from Kyle and from Gary, and but I think it gives me a unique perspective having having the offensive background and playing in in the system that kind of you know, produced the air raid um, with, with Norm Chow and the offense that we had here in BYU when Lavelle was the head coach. And I think that gives me an interesting perspective on how to defend these teams. There's a lot of the things that Utah State does on offense with Mike Sanford Jr. running the offense now. Well, Yost was the one that kind of implemented this offense. So there's a lot of air raid concepts that I recognize in, in their game. And so, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, we'll see if we can play. They go fast and, and trying to get us out of position. and. I think we've been able to practice that quite a bit, and we'll see if it works out. But I think for us, we just got to disrupt and try to be aggressive and, and own the line of scrimmage, and we'll see what happens. Looking forward to an intriguing, uh, cool night in Logan on Saturday night break time. As we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen in a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. Mondays at 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, we talk with the BYU football coordinators on the coordinator's corner with Jeff Grimes, Elisa Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb joining me here in Studio C. It's also on demand on the BYU TV app. After the break, from Liberia to Provo, it's the story of Ryan Zawolaku. Bob Dax and Coach Sitake taking your questions in studio and on social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From personal injury to business law and from adoption to bankruptcy, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. It doesn't take something huge to make a difference. How many people in your house? And that's why we're here, to help build something that will last a lifetime. Oh, my word. Oh. Can we do this? We are so grateful that you welcomed us into your community. I'm excited to go out in the world and see who else is making good. Friday night, it is your first opportunity to see Mark Pope's first BYU basketball squad in action as the Cougars take on UT Tyler in the Cougs Lone Exhibition game at the Marriott Center seat on BYU TV. Hear it on the BYU Cougars app. Friday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Well, in BYU's win over Boise State, Diane Gomoloku played a key role, moving from corner to safety, where he had played before, before going outside to corner. Now, his versatility makes him all but indispensable, but it's not the only thing that makes him valuable to the Cougar football program. Here now, a deeper look at the life of Diane Gomoloku in this week's edition of Deep Blue. My name is Diane Gawaluku Lake. I was born in Liberia, that's West Africa, and I came here when I was five because it was like a civil war going on. He's come out and been open about how some things come a little bit harder to him as far as school and learning, and he's a, a kid that is really the epitome of putting your head down and just working hard at something. Lyman in there as well, they 
pitch it, and it's a touchdown for BYU. That's Skowolaku, a cornerback, who is in there at running back, getting the touchdown. We saw my mom for the first time. She picks us up at the Salt Lake Airport, and we're just like, amazed just like this place is big you know the minute i saw them get off the plane the minute i saw diane with connected eyes he just kind of melted my heart so he was scared he was just quiet couldn't say anything me and my sister is our first time seeing like white people so we're just like what the heck is this this lady's taking our hands like taking us to a car so we didn't know what was going on and it was just a culture shock the environment like i said i was switching the light switch off and on because it's all new to me seeing light, table, food. They brought us like chicken noodle soup. That was like our first meal we ate. And we also had to learn English, so it was hard to understand them and communicate. So we were just freaked out until my dad actually came back to Utah and was like explaining everything to us. Everything was gonna be good. I said, if you do come here, you have to work hard. You have to go to school, do everything you can. Quickly battled up and intercepted. Did they get it? If they got it, it's over. It's over. The Cougars picked it up. Every game, I will write him a memo or a letter. I said, remember where you came from, remember what I told you. So you play this game, you play with all your heart, you'll be successful. And that's what he always do, play with all your heart. Big hit, balls out, Cougars got it! Duelico to the end zone, touchdown! His story to his teammates and to the players is really a story of just triumph over difficulty, just having determination, and he's been fun to be around just because the odds were really against him as far as coming to a tough academic school. He's the kind of guy that when you give him a challenge, he'll just, he'll surpass it, he'll, he'll overcome anything. And I probably made the mistake, which I think now is a good challenge, and just basically told him that, hey, a lot of people don't think he can make it here because school's so hard. That was the last we ever worried about his academics. Refuse to be outworked, whether it's um, weight room, running sprints, or whatever the case may be, and classroom as well. You know, a guy who, who came in, an underdog as far as academic goes. He's really done a good job just fighting through all the things that he's had to and not really looking at it as a crutch, but something that's just determined him to get through his education. Diane has an incredible commitment to the contact of football. Maybe as much or more than any player I've ever coached. He really enjoys, with a smile, the contact part of the game. I just really like to hit, like, that's the one thing I separated, like, football and soccer. Like I said, I used to play soccer when I was little on a competitive team, and I had to, like, decide which one. Football just really stood out to me. It's just, I'm like, you get to hit kids? Like, you get to hit other people? Like, and it's legal? I'm like, I got to for sure, <laughs> I got to for sure stick with football. Like, because soccer, I used to get, like, Penalties call on me, just like shoving little kids, and everything's a foul on me. Like, so football, that was never the problem. Rewarded, obviously, for hitting kids, and I was like, I like that. A lot of guys will muster the courage necessary to make the play at the moment. A lot of guys enjoy being the aggressor when the angle is correct to, to make contact. Diane enjoys all contact, never flinches. It's particularly amongst DBs. I think there's, he's one of the best there is getting married to my wife, Madison. But that was like one of the biggest highlights because she changed my life for sure. Because even here, I still, like I said, I was focused, but I wasn't all the way there focused in school or football, really. And getting married to her uh, last year, she just kept me in like a straight line, like had me organized and take care of my homework before I even like think about anything else, like video games, stuff like that. She was always there to love me and take care of me. And she deserves the world. And that was just like a big highlight in my life. And she's. She's like one of those ride or die girls. Like I said, she gives me that energy to, and motivates me and pushes me to do better in my life. I remember telling him once that doors would open and things would happen and that he would just be amazed with his family and, and the people back home and, and all those things if he continued to do what he needed to do and be strong in it. Remember your heritage, remember those that fought for you to be here where you are. You walk on the shoulders of giants. So be proud of whatsoever, wherever your son or daughter coming from. You have proud in him as a human being first. Secondly, you should have proud in him for what he is. He will always be on that and become somebody better in the future.
Kalani, what a great story. Yeah, just uh, those are hard to follow up with and say something just emotional, uh, just, just seeing Diane and the things that he's done. Um, he makes so many plays on the football field, but the impact that he has on our team, you know, the, the, um, the culture that, that he's able to, to work with our team and our, and our players and our coaches, this, uh, he's a great example of having fun even through tough times, you know, and when he's able to share his story with the players, it's just, you know, that guy loves being on the football field, even in the cold weather and, and the, the elements. And, uh, you know, he's a senior now and just really happy for him. And, He's just, he's just going to do so many great things in life and, and uh, beyond this and beyond football, but he'll have an opportunity to play football for a long time. You're going to miss him a lot. It's funny, uh, he's one of the most important defensive players you have, um, and, and yet he's also a guy that never wants to be off a special team. He loves special teams play as well. Yeah, and, and, and the longevity that he has, I mean, it's hard because he's always playing kickoff and punt, and he just won't come off the field. And we might as well put him on the field and on those teams because if not, he goes to scout team and does stuff there <laughs> just to give our, our team a look. And so uh, he just loves being on the field. And I think it, for me as a coach, it's just uh, such a great example for others to watch. And, you know, he's, he's not really much, he's not going to say much to people, but they follow his example and, and they see the, how happy he is. And, 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 and he, that guy powers through adversity like it's nothing. I mean, that's whatever challenge we give him he he just kills it and and um whether it's academics getting a degree from byu and uh, whatever it could be we, we give him a challenge and we asked i asked him this year to be more outspoken and to help the, the young guys and the, the reason why our corners and our players the young guys are starting to step up is because of the mentoring that he's given them and the time that he spent to really work with them and so uh, he just does, so, does so much more than people can really see mm -hmm. And then uh, he's going to be really missed, but I'm, we got some more time with him, so we'll take advantage of as much time we can with him. You said a minute ago he could play football for a while. You think he's a next level guy, and and do you hear from from people the next level about him? I do, and it's because the, the scouts notice that he's always on the field. You know, so the things that he's been making special teams plays uh, since since I seen him play football, and so I think he's got a lot of opportunities to do that. And and I think and you know just someone should just doubt him and and see see what happens, and that guy will find a way to get get it done. It, that's just who he is. Okay, Q&A time on the Satake Show now. We've got the live audience and social media questions ready to roll. And we'll start this week here in Studio C. It's our man Brenton at the mic. Brenton Farrell, uh, you're on with Coach. All right, thanks, Greg. All right, Coach, we got Halloween coming up this week. And uh, so my question is, what is the scariest memory or, or experience that you've had as a player and then as a coach? Scariest? Yeah. You mean not, not really the Halloween? Just no, not necessarily. Yeah, okay. Um, I was about to say like haunted houses. They, those, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense why you should pay money to go in there and get scared. <laughs> you know. And so just yeah, the, if you need to be scared, just come talk to me. I'll, I'll take your money and find a way to scare you. <laughs> no, but I, I think the scariest moment is just always injuries. It's always it's a it's the hardest part of this game, and, and knowing that guys get hurt and, and it's it's always a tough thing. It's scary to see all these young men, the hard work that they put in and. To, for them to be laying on the ground, it's always hard. That's the scary part for me as a coach and as a player. Okay, uh, Brenton, thanks. Uh, Devin Crossley on Twitter uh, sent in a comment about uh, an old alternate uh, blue helmet look uh, from, from days gone by. Um, have, you, have you noticed all the different helmets that BYU's had out there in the past? And would you like to see something a little different from BYU occasionally? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, do you I, care? I mean, do you, like, do you like? Do you do you care what the guys wear? I mean, not really. I mean, that, that's uh, I, whatever. If, if it has a Y on it, I'm good with it. You know. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think we've we've kind of looked into some of the vintage looks and things like that. And I, I trust the marketing department. David Amadola does a great great job at that. And Tom figures things out to, to try to get the uh, you know bring some of the the old looks back. But. We probably have yeah. fewer crazy looks than most. Like, it seems like a lot of schools have multiple alternates, and we're pretty basic that way, aren't we, in terms yeah. of what's out there? And I'm, I'm okay with it. I just think the Royals are so nice. Why would you ever go away from it? <laughs> you know, it works with every color, so. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you wear the Royal hat every week, pretty much. On I do, day. yeah. It's just to, to cover up my receding hairline. That's the name, <laughs> number one thing. So I, I, I guess I could start wearing a hat as well. Uh, <laughs> uh, wear it backwards. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really fits me. Uh, for the local crowd, uh, on Halloween, this Thursday night from 5 to 7 Mountain Time, fans and their families can enjoy a trunk or treat right here in Provo with uh, BYU football and the athletic department in the parking lot between the Student Athlete Building and the Smith Fieldhouse. You're bound to see some of your favorite BYU football players, players like Austin Lee. 
Yes, who along with his family debuted their Aladdin outfits a few days ago on, on Instagram. So he's a strong safety with a strong Halloween game. That's Austin Lee. I guess every year kind of people look forward to what he's going to do. He just wanted to take his shirt off and show off. <laughs> show off his physique to everyone. No, he's a great looking genie. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, go, you go blue paint, you're either going to be Aladdin or a Smurf, I think is the way it goes. <laughs> or the, 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 the genie or a Smurf. All right, uh, this reminder now. Uh, join us Saturday at the 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, WCC Player of the Week, McKenna Miller, and the 11th ranked women's volleyball team hosting Pacific. That'll be on BYU TV. Coming up next, we'll check in with our NFL Cubes and this in studio. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake here on BYU TV, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Cougars last had the wagon wheel back in 2016, hope to recapture it this Saturday in Logan. Cougars in the NFL doing real well. Taysom Hill has more touchdown catches than a lot of receivers out there. He had three catches for a score in 63 yards for the Saints on the weekend and just rocked some dude on the sideline as well. Jamal Williams, two touchdowns, one receiving, one rushing. That's great back to you with Aaron Jones. Fred Warner with the undefeated Niners and Kyle Van Noy with the undefeated Patriots, both making a big difference for their team. It's great to see. All right, our player guest tonight is a guy who's been around for a while and has been through a lot, enough that his teammates have a lot to say about him. I can never beat that dude in anything. He's just, everything that he does, he's good at. Father. He's like a father figure for a lot of the guys on the team. I look up to him a lot. I lift with him all the time. He's just, he's there for you. He's going to be the guy who keeps you in line, keeps you working. If you get down, he pulls you up. If you get up, he pulls you down. He's one of those guys that, that leads by example and uh, really brings something special to our football team. Freak. Freak athlete. That guy can do anything you ask him to do. The one play that sticks out to me is uh, the one when he hurdled the guy versus Arizona. You know, that just shows how big of an athlete he is. He can stick through anything. Um, he's, you know, he's been through some injuries and stuff, and he always comes back and holds his ball. As a former tight end, he's special to watch. He can do it all. He can block, catch passes, run routes. He's, he's, he's special. Our own eye. Uh, future Tiger Woods. Uh, he's not that good, but uh, he thinks he is. So we spent some time on the course together. So 
<laughs> All right, please welcome in the studio C and the Sitake Show, tight end, Moroni La Ulu Putu Tau. Have a seat. Good to have you here. Oh, good to be here. Thanks for having me. So the Boise State game was already 10 days ago, as we talked about. You've moved on, clearly. Uh, but what was special about that night? If you can look back to that week, what led up to it, and how you guys performed as a team? Uh, I think it was special just because we got to see a glimpse of what we can do as a team. Uh, we came together in practice. We had a really good, good week of practice. And uh, it was just exciting because people were making plays all over the place, you know, offensive side and, and defensive side as well. So for me, it was just special because we got to see how good of a team we can be, and, and it wasn't the best game, but, you know, we, we showed kind of who we are. We see, especially at the end of the game, how excited and, and invested Kalani can get there on the sideline. What does he bring to the team by being just who he is that way? <laughs> <laughs> I know he's right there, but hey. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool, man, and I tell you what, I've, I've had a lot of coaches here. I've been here for a while. <laughs> and personally, I think it's awesome when you see your coach uh, with that much love for the game and for us as well, and to be excited for the things that we do. Um, it just makes you want to play that much more and makes you appreciate the game. So I, I love it. And I love him on the sideline, seeing him jumping around. You know, he, he turns the clock back 20 years and <laughs> he, he gets some, he has some ups. So. <laughs> Now, you may not have seen the little video montage we had of your teammates, but Kalani, you got to see that. Uh, as you watch those comments, what would you want to add to what they were saying about this guy here? He's a key part of our team and our culture. He's been here for a while, you know, and uh, I think he makes tons of plays. And, and you see everyone talk about his athleticism, and he's gone through some adversity with his injuries and things like that, but he, he always comes back better from it. And, and I, I remember his – you remember the, the Mississippi State catch that he made? is like this amazing catch that – that uh, not a lot of guys can go from being a, uh, a receiver to move into the box and play tight end, but he's one of our best blockers as, as, as on the line of scrimmage as well. And uh, the things that he does with this, with this team is it's amazing. And the mentoring that he does, individual mentoring, putting guys under his, shoulder, under his arm and taking care of them. I mean, Bracken was talking about how influential Moroni was to him, and, and that's a D lineman. And so the things that he does, it's, it's a soft-spoken guy and really humble, but. The impact he has on our team is it's, it's awesome. And to have guys like him and Diane be seniors and be leaders on our team, I, that's something that I, I, I watch as a coach and just thankful that I get to, I get to be his coach and be around him. Moroni, am I right remembering that when you first got here, uh, you, were, you were a wide receiver, right? Yes, sir. You kind of grew into tight end. How did that transition go for you? Did you think you'd be a wide out at, at BYU? Or, or how I soon did. was it until you realized that? I did. And um, initially it was uh, Coach Reynolds uh, way back when who was – kind of recruiting me and he told me one day you're going to be a tight end and I was like there's no way. I was 185, 65. <laughs> um, my freshman year I came in at 185, first way in was 185. So I didn't, there's no way, like in my mind I was like there's no way I'm putting on. That's 65 pounds later, I'm <laughs> almost 250 right now. So that, that was a big change just physically. Um, but mentally it was really different because I had the mindset of just being a wide receiver and I had to learn how to block. and everything that came with that and just doing what I need to do for the team. Are you fully a tight end everywhere now? Oh, I'm fully a tight end now. <laughs> that, that was, uh, it was kind of the reason I switched my number too because I was one at 17 and I knew I just wanted a fresh start. I just wanted a completely random number. Kind of just took along, go along with my whole mindset because I knew it was going to be a totally different game. Okay. That's what I had to do. So, uh, Utah State flashing forward Saturday night. You went to Mountain Crest High School? Yes, sir. Okay. That's Hiram, Utah. Yep. That's not too far from Logan, right? Very close. Okay, so bring us, uh, bring us uh, back into your growing up a little bit in that neighborhood. When you're going to school, Utah State, heavy emphasis there. Were you a BYU guy? How'd this all turn out? Um, it was different for me. I didn't really, I didn't even know scholarship was a thing until my sophomore year of high school. Um, my mom just wanted me to play football just because she knew I loved it. And so... She didn't really go to college. No one really in my family went to college. So for me, past high school, I never really thought about. Hmm. And uh, the first time I really saw it was uh, Alex Caressa. I don't know if you remember him, but I saw him go to BYU, and I was like, oh, I think that's something I could do. And I looked into it, and I was like, wow, you can get paid to go to school? And <laughs> My mom was like, yeah, I told you that. I was like, no, you didn't tell me that. She's <laughs> like, I thought I did. but So that was kind of a whole new process, just figuring out that. And 
you know, I came from a small town. It's about 2,200 people in Hiram, but it is close to Logan, about 10 minutes south. So, Does the Utah State game mean anything more to you for where you went to high school, or is it the two-game win streak they've got right now, or three of five? What's, what's kind of into it for you right now? Um, I mean, I, I want to win every game, but it is going to be nice just to, you know, look at my friends in the face and be like, sorry. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, all, my, all my good buddies that I grew up with are out there, and they're huge Utah State fans, so it'll be fun. Yeah, we saw in the video montage with some of your teammates talking about injuries you've gone through. Uh, describe what you have gone through here in the last little bit. Uh, biggest two, I would say, was my Liz Frank injury. Luckily, I didn't need surgery, but it did keep me out for the season. And that was in 2017. And then uh, came back last year, and I played the 2018 season. And then the fifth game of last year against Washington, I, I tore my right ACL and my MCL. And so there was no question of like getting another year back or anything I knew this would be my last year and so those were the two biggest ones in short <laughs> yeah uh, you watched him battle back to get ready to play this year uh, tough guy really tough guy and, and just the, uh, the the mental aspect of it you know and staying positive and working through all of it and then also uh, caring for his teammates like he did you know it's 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 great to have a guy that that is willing to lead but also a guy that's willing to lead when, when, when he's hurt and, and, and not on the field. And that's something that we've been, we've been able to benefit from having his presence on, on, in our program. So on and off the field, he's been, he's been a huge impact for our team. Moroni, what are the origins of your last name with the hyphen and everything else? Yeah, so Laulu is my mom's maiden name. Um, Pututau is my stepdad, my dad now. Um, so my name used to be Moroni Stephen Lee. Um, for my biological father. Who are we seeing here, by the way? Yeah, so Graybeard, and that's my stepdad. Um, my mom's to his left. And then those are all just my siblings. So curly hair, lady to the right's the oldest, and I'm the second. And then my wife in the green dress. So the far right there is Kira, your wife. Yes. Yes. Yep. And, and there, hey, hey, it's Kira. Now, <laughs> she, uh, she knows her way around this building. Explain why. She does. She worked here for a while, and she <laughs> loved it. Uh, she loved being kind of behind the scenes and helping out with all the different shows and this show and yeah and this show yeah she was always nice to me made me feel right at home here by the way so yes <laughs> uh, and uh, you guys recently shared some uh, well big news we did we found out Thursday last week we're having a baby boy uh, she's pregnant he'll be due in April so. All right, and what's uh, scholastically, what are you majoring in and are you, are you close to wrapping up or? Yeah, so construction management is my major. I didn't realize it was such a long major when I got into it. <laughs> I probably should have been here a while. Early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went through like three or four different majors and I was like, oh, that one sounds cool. I didn't realize it was 85 credits, almost double a normal major. <laughs> um, I pretty much could be a chemical engineer if I took like 10 more. But. <laughs> Anyways, I love it. It's, it's awesome, and it, it, was, it was meant to be. And uh, I have one more semester after this, so it's kind of up in the air. I don't know okay. what my future holds after this. But. We're not quite at the end for you, but how would you describe your BYU football playing career to this point? Uh, I feel like, and I've said this before, anyone that's asked, is it's a whole other lifetime. And the amount of ups and downs I've gone through is it's changed my life. It'll change my life forever. Um, and coach, you know, he gives me too much props. He knows, he knows very well I was, I've not always been like this. And, and I'd say more towards the end, I realized that it wasn't about me. And, and kind of the first couple years, it was just football, like football, and that's it. And, and it took me a couple season ending injuries, took marrying my wife, and took getting to these past couple years to realize that BYU <clears throat> Um, BYU and football is just so much more than a game, and it's cliche, but it's true. Um, you get to rub shoulders with some of the best people in the world and be a part of making a difference in people's lives. And so for me, that's what it's been all about. And it took me a while to get to understand that, but I'm glad I did. Right on. Hey, thanks for coming in. Thank Thanks you. very much. Good luck the rest of the way. All right. Did you know that you can have your groceries waiting for you to be picked up or better yet dropped off at your front door? It's all done online. SmithsFoodAndDrug.com or on their app on your phone. Download the Smiths app and save time. Shop online. As we go to break, here's this week's trivia question. True or false? In the last 50 years, BYU's never lost to Utah State in the month of November. 
So which is it? True or false? We'll tell you after the break. With the BYU license plates, no matter where you are, you show your Cougar spirit and you make it possible for students to get an education. The donation you make when you get the license plates goes to support BYU scholarships. So whether spreading Cougar pride coast to coast or getting to the big game, you're also funding scholarship opportunities for BYU students. Learn about free special plates today at alumni.byu.edu slash plates. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Call it a path. Or a way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. Get outside with the ones you love and enjoy the open road. And the closed one. We believe in family, fun, and experiences that last. And we want to be there as you make new memories over and over again. That's why we're proud to carry the popular Nissan Rogue. Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Family owned since 1968. All right, before the break, we asked, true or false, BYU's never lost to Utah State in the month of November. The answer, happily, is true. Yes, 7-0 all time when they take on the Aggies in the month of November over the last 50 years of football. We hope that extends. Well, Colorado, every game has its own personality. We know that. But did the win over Boise State kind of maybe set a bar for you guys the rest of the year, like you can just pick this thing up and roll with it? Yeah, I think the guys are just the, the sense of urgency to play that level and then... Um, you know, it's motivating for our players, but it's also just to be be able to sustain it. Even with that that result, we know we can play better, and that's what the the focus on after the after the win was to try to get better, even from that game and winning it. So we're not just resting with the result. We want to play better and be, be at our best. Hopefully, it shows up on Saturday. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Go All right. Fans to request seats for next week's show, go to byucougars.com slash sitake show. We'll talk to you next Monday, special time and date, Monday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, because of men's basketball next Tuesday. For director Scott Hill, Jerem Jordan, the coach, Moroni, I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Good night. Go Cougs.